In today's video, we're going over how to manage your eBay inventory and how to sell old stale inventory. Let's get right into it. Hey guys, Jeff here with Resale Heroes and I'm here with Common Lad. Hey guys, I'm Common Lad and I am a reseller on eBay with my business partner, Airval. Yeah, so we're resellers on eBay too. I almost said YouTube. <laughs> so today we're gonna be talking about how to more actively work on the prices on your eBay store, how to get things to sell faster, et cetera, et cetera. And this is something that everybody struggles with in their own way. And we made a video about this a couple months back, but we just wanted to touch up on it again because it's something that, you know, coming out of the busy season, going into kind of the slow season, trying to get it to pick up again in spring, um, I think it, it's a good time of year to, to do a video like this. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, uh, we specifically, I think both of us deal with a lot of lower value gains, which often means that we have higher quantities, meaning that throughout our stores we have thousands of items that need to be checked up on and adjusted in terms of price and maybe the listings themselves to make sure that they're still going to sell because what's having 2000 listings if they're just sitting there and nothing's happening with them they're dead listings they're not ranking and they're not going to sell so one of the things that you have to do as part of selling on ebay is go back to those old listings and adjust them whether that be adjusting the price, adjusting the title, adjusting the description to add some more keywords, adjusting the photos of them, and making sure that you're making those changes appropriate to make sure they sell. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. There's a great way that you've been talking to me about here just a little bit before the show, which is going in every single week or every single month and adjusting the price of the listing to decrease it until it does sell. Uh, but there's a bunch of other things that you can do as well, which we'll sort of break down in today's video. Yeah, so the, so the first, uh, as you were talking, so I've got my little list here, but uh, <laughs> as you were talking, something came to mind and uh, something I used to talk about on the channel a lot. And I like, everyone talks about this, that re com like a complete refresh of your listing, like ending the listing and relisting it. People say that is the way to go. And we did that for the first long time. But then I was on a podcast with uh, Nurse Flipper and she mentioned that she doesn't do that because you can't see the date that your listing was first made, right? So Absolutely. you might have a, an item that's two years old in your inventory, but you, you can't really remember when it was because if you're uh, unlisting it and relisting it every month, you only see when it was last relisted. And so uh, that's actually a fairly big deal because just at a glance, you can see, okay, what's really old here in my inventory, right? And I mean, if some people only have like 100 items or maybe 200 items, like it's not that big of a deal. But when you get into like a large amount of inventory, like in the thousands, it is important to know how old your stuff is like, because so part of our problem with our store, so we've got over 10,000 items, like probably 12 or 13,000. Now, um, we did have a lot of dead listings, because we, we sell a lot of bulk stuff, like you said, DVDs, CDs, and stuff like that. And I mean, when you first list an item with the best of intentions, you're trying to find a price where you squeeze out as much profit as possible, but at the same time, it's it's a price where someone's going to want to buy it. Yeah, and it doesn't sit. Right. But sometimes you're way off in the sense that you price it too low and it just sells. And yeah. sometimes you're way off where, for whatever reason, you thought it was worth way more and it's not. Or maybe the market changed by the time that it was your turn to sell and so on and so forth. So now uh, we don't end the listings anymore. We just change the prices because we did learn that any time that you change something on a listing, it refreshes it to some degree. If you change the description a little bit, if you change up the photos, if you change the price, if you have a sale on it or whatever, all these things um, in the algorithm, which we're not going to go too, too much into the details, but there's so many factors, but every little change on a listing gives it that little boost where uh, it's not necessarily necessary to completely remove the listing and start over because having that timestamp of when you first listed your item is pretty important. Absolutely. Yeah. So on our small store, when we had first started, we were doing that realist thing and listen, it definitely does work and it does yeah. revamp it. But to your point, I'd say you almost get the same result just from doing a modification in any sort of way of the listing. You're absolutely right to say the start date is one of the most important things, because one of the things that we do on our video game store, our main store 
is I'll go into our listings, I'll sort it by the start date, and I will just rip through and adjust yes. the prices every single day until they sell. You'll see the first item's four years old, the second one's two years old, the third one's a year old, and then so forth. And, and so you go through it and you you just, you know, you sell them for less than you bought them, whatever. You got to get rid of them because they've been staying too long. Now, another strategy that we uh, use moving on from that is let's say that we have a bulk amount of games and some of them just never sell. You know, you got 50 copies of Connect Adventures or you've got whatever, <laughs> right? Like, you know, they just yeah. sit forever. Sports champion. Um, yeah, exactly. Right. So so what are you going to do with that stuff? Because, you know, you can sell for a dollar, you can sell for 50 cents. I could pay you a dollar. You still won't take it. So what am I going to do with this thing? Uh, so another thing that we'll do is we'll sort by start date. We'll take the first 50 listings, the first 100 listings, whatever it is, delist them all, pull them all from inventory, take them all together, take a photo of them, list them as a bulk option, uh, and list them as a lot. And that will bring some value to them because although things might not be valuable on their own, when you put a whole bunch of them together, you can at least get some value from it. So that's another strategy that we use in terms of old listings. We'll take them, bulk them up. And we'll be able to get rid of them that way. And I think that's another important thing to look at. Yeah. So we're talking about a handful of games that everybody <laughs> has and nobody wants. And so, uh, yeah, Connect Adventures. So we have like, I don't know, 15 or 20 copies of Sports Champion for the PS3. So another thing, so so that that's a great uh, strategy. And another way that we've uh, tried to liquidate a little bit is that when you sell so usually when we sell consoles, like video game consoles, mm -hmm. like the next box or a PS3, we sell it with just a console and a controller and the cables. We don't usually bundle it up with games. And that's simply because selling games on their own, usually you're able to squeeze out a little more. But I mean, if you're looking at your shelf and you have games that never sell, what you can do is you can bundle them up. Like you could take one or two of those games, like those old sports games that aren't worth yeah, whatever it is or whatever the game is and just add it into your bundle eh, maybe charge a dollar or two more or whatever but i mean they're not selling anyway so it adds value to like a bigger bundle that has value and it will make it more likely to sell even if on their own they're not worth anything right so it's it's really interesting in that sense uh yeah i mean i'll say like we've done that with wii consoles and all these sort of things where yeah. if you take a console and you have the exact same thing as somebody else on eBay for the exact same price, but you have two or three crappy games that just would not have sold otherwise. That's going to make your console chosen before theirs and it's going to increase your sell through rate on those consoles exponentially. So it's a really cool thing. And like you say, bundling things up is, is really important in that sense as well. Yeah, usually quality trumps quantity. But sometimes, like usually, you said, usually, but sometimes <laughs> if you're looking at exactly the same thing, but you have a little extra you're people always want more people are greedy man yeah. <laughs> it's a problem but that's all right well think about it too if it's your first console ever at least when you get it in the door exactly. you can try it out with madden 07 or whatever right so it's just like <laughs> yeah and um actually it got me thinking what you said earlier about uh so on ebay you can sort your listings in a lot of different ways but mm -hmm. mostly by price by uh quantity that you have and by dates uh so when when we so every week i try to tweak the store a little bit whether that means i add a new category and i organize it better or if it means i go play in the prices to help things sell better so we have some items that are worth four or five hundred dollars like really rare games but most of our stuff is under twenty dollars maybe like under thirty dollars so I would say I use like two uh, different strategies for the high end stuff than for the bulk stuff. Yeah. But so for the bulk stuff, what I'll do is I'll do like you and I'll sort it by starting date. And then I'll select, uh, you can select in bulk up yep. to 2000 items at a time. And I mean, most people aren't going to have that much, but we do. So we'll select the 2000 oldest games. And then um, we're going to go in the, whatever it's called, the bulk editing tool. And then in that tool, you can then sort them by price. And then you can just um, figure out what's the minimum that I want to charge. So for us, it's basically like six bucks, like five ninety five. If you charge any less than that after fees and the shipping costs and all that, I mean, you're basically sending it for free if you're sending it for five bucks. And sometimes we do like just to get it out. 
But uh, so you can uncheck everything, all the items that are like at your threshold, but then you can edit like 1900 games at the same time and just modify your price downwards by a little bit, whether it's 5%, 10% or whatever. And you can also put, I don't want the price to be lower than. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, you can do the lower than clause in the price section on the bulk right. edit, which is what we've done as well, where you can go, you can, it'll ask you, what do you want to lower each one by? A dollar, two dollars, but don't go lower than this. Yeah. And that's a really easy way to, to modify them as well, just like you're saying. So yeah, and you can modify them by percentage or by dollar amount. But right. The reason yep. I say to remove those ones that are already at your threshold is because say you have an item that's listed for five dollars and you say you don't want the price to be lower than six, it's actually going to increase the price. Oh, to six, right. Yeah. Which uh, it's not always something that you want because um, if it's already not selling at five, it's not going to sell at six. But so that's how I've been um, navigating through reducing the price on 10,000 items just by a little bit. And you don't want to do that every week, but like even if it's once a month when you see, and that way you're, you're modifying it by the oldest ones. Right. And so you don't want to do that with something that you just listed, but like if nope. something's been sitting there for six months or whatever, that's, that's a good way to do it. And the other way is the other, like for the higher end stuff, what I've been doing is, so instead of sorting it by date, you can sort it by price. And uh, you can cross-reference the date so you're not reducing the price on stuff that was just listed. But I will uh, modif I'll select them. If you're not in the bulk editing tool, you can select up to 200 at a time. So I will select them one by one and be like, okay, I want to reduce this. I want to reduce this. And I'll reduce the price one at a time. Because again, we don't have thousands right. of the high-end stuff. Yep. And then when I've selected them all, uh, I'm going to go... In, in the action button, there's an add note and I will write out price drop, you know, uh, May 3rd or whatever. Oh, so just okay. by looking at it, I'm going to know when the last time I adjusted this price because there's a few people working in our store and I wouldn't want someone to be like, oh, okay, uh, I want to reduce this price, but it was reduced just yesterday. Right so that's kind did. of a new thing that we've been doing and I've been finding it really helpful. And actually when you have a sale, that pops up in your comments. Like they, they don't see it, but you see it. So we'll see stuff that's sold and it's because I lowered the price last week, right? So right. it's good feedback in that way. And so let's talk a little bit more now about the other option, which is the promotion manager, the sales that you can yeah. run in your store. And if you have a paid eBay store, I don't think you can do this without one, but if you have a paid eBay store, even at the lowest subscription level, you do get access to the promotion manager, which allows you to run sales on your items. Yeah. Now you can do this as a percentage or as a dollar amount. And it, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can do this as uh, per listing date, right? Can you run a sale based on how old, can you run a sale for I items? Don't list? Know. I don't know. I thought that may have been uh, something that you can do. Um, but regardless, you can set a sale to do things under a certain price for sure. And you can set a sale based on category as well. So if you just want to touch your video games or your CDs or your DVDs, whatever it is, uh, you can launch that through the promotion manager, which is also a way to boost your listings in the ranking and also maybe encourage a couple more sales. You can also do a sale that uh, is like a buy one, get one or, you know, something like that, which will encourage more sales. So if a buyer is buying one thing, maybe they'll buy two from you now instead. So there's a lot of ways that way as well that you can look into adjusting prices and promoting listings. That's an easy way to do it. And you can always be rotating that through categories or different items in your store every week or month. For sure. And uh, so we use that a lot, but it's important to get familiar with how the things work uh, to not it's important for you to know like how much you can afford to drop it by. Right. And uh, so we usually have three or four different sales happening at the same time. So at, at, as of right now, we have a 20% off sale on most of the store because um, turns out a lot of our stuff had inflated prices and we're realizing now that we need to bring the pricing down. And so as a whole, the store has about a 20% uh, discount. And a few months ago, we just started launching uh, selling clothing. So that's more recent. So it's not really old yet. So I excluded those categories and I have a separate sale for the clothing. And then I have a separate sale as well for the high end stuff. <clears throat> so 
To put it differently, the three sales that we have going on is basically 20% off everything except video game consoles and any games up until 50 bucks. Right. And then I have a separate sale for whatever the percentages is at that time for $50 and over, because I don't want to put 20% off of a $500 game. Right. Um, and I don't want to have a sale on, on the consoles because we're already competitively priced. And instead, I'll just tweak the price manually, like I said earlier, by a dollar or two or whatever it is at that time, just to get it that extra little oomph to sell. And for the clothing, whatever the percentage is. Um, so those are that's kind of how we manage uh, the promotion manager. But you have to be careful because um, we do it by selecting categories. Um, mm. So everything in that category gets on sale. So I noticed that there were some things that have categories that kind of overlap if you're not careful. So you, we had some items that were 20% off that we didn't want to be 20% off. So if you have like two sales that are kind of overlapping, it's just going to pick up the biggest one. Right. Hmm. Interesting. And, and so there's another theory out there that involves people doing sales on their items yeah. all the time, no matter what, which mm -hmm. is that I'm going to list this item for $10, but I'm going to sell it for eight. And that was the actual list price that I wanted to be on, but I put it for 10 because then it looks like I'm giving a better deal. Is there any sort of merit there or anything? For that's... sure. For sure. So what we used to do is to have a sale run from Thursday to Monday and then have it full price after that, because when you have that, uh, the buyer will see that it's only on sale for a certain amount of time. Right. Um, but now, I mean, we just have it on all the time and that's been working for us too. But I mean, for, for a typical store, I, I, there is a psycho psychological element to, to having, having just that. the sale on right. all the time and having it on all the time means that you don't need to tinker with it. It's just always on. Uh, but I will say this, if you have a sale on and you modify a price, uh, it's going to modify it off of the reduced price. Oh, okay. okay so let's say you have a $10 item, like you said, and it's 20% off. So it's now $8. Um, let's say um, you, you do in your bulk thing that you want to drop it by $2. In your mind, you might think I want it to be $8, $8 now, so it's but it's actually going to go down to six. And also if you modify the price manually, uh, let's say you, you put it yourself to seven ninety five. This depending on the settings that you put in your sale, the 20% off might kick in again. So it might actually drop down to like six or whatever. Um, so just be aware of those things um, so that you're not dropping the price twice as much as you first thought. So sure. usually before I start touching prices, I stop the sales. I stop the promotions and I, I give the, the system time to basically go all the prices go back to normal then i do my changes and then i reinitiate the sale based on the pricing that i know that i wanted to put on right on yeah and so like you said i, I really like the idea of, of search, sorting by high priced items i'm yeah. just going back a few steps here because i think that's really neat in terms of not just worrying about the oldest stuff but let's say you have stuff that's more valuable that will bring in money right now that stuff that you want to be dealing with and adjusting maybe re-researching and figuring out a good price for and yeah, to your point with that, with that low, low price items and organizing it that way and sorting by that, that's something that we do on our store. And I think it's a very valuable thing for anybody that has a large quantity of items. Let's maybe dive a little bit more into uh, the other things you can do to a listing. Let's say that you have a fairly priced listing, you've done the research on it and it's still priced well, but for whatever reason, it's just not selling. Uh, one thing that I'll note is if you have items listed maybe before last year, they added uh, uh, item specifics that are required. Mm. And before they added that, they weren't required. Now, if you have a listing and eBay will tell you this, you'll have a little red thing next to it saying that you're missing required item specifics. That could be a big uh, problem for your old listings. So that's the first thing that I would go in and touch up is make sure that you have those required item specifics because I really do believe without them, eBay is not really showing your listing to anybody because that's required by their platform now. 
And then you can go ahead and adjust more item specifics on an item that will uh, tweak the uh, item that way. A title adjustment is also an important thing, especially if you're dealing with more obscure items. Maybe it's an antique, maybe it's something that's not so familiar in terms of a general search result. Adding different keywords or items and your or, uh, titles into your title, uh, different words or whatever that relate to the item might be important in terms of getting it to a different audience, uh, as well as a slight modification of the description. And one of the most important things, in my opinion, is actually maybe adjusting your photo if you don't have maybe a clear photo of the item or maybe you want to photo it as a bundle of all the things that's going in versus just you start with the one photo even moving photos around could sometimes be helpful in that sense but just doing minor tweaks to your listing can be really important in terms of getting it to some new eyes and getting it ranking on ebay again yeah for sure and just thinking about photos um keeping it simple like uh you could even just uh let's say you have a picture of i don't know my phone um, but the picture is everything around the phone too. You could just mm. crop out everything around the phone. So it, it's just focused on that. And just that change will make it look like a brand new photo. And it's really zoomed in. Um, like basically any change to a listing gives it a little bit of life. For sure. But those uh, item specifics that are now required, um, eBay didn't straight out say it but likely they're not promoting those listings at all. And the probably the only way that people can have access to it, if they're searching specifically in your store, I wouldn't be surprised if that's how it is. Yeah. Um, be, because like all the item specifics go into their catalog, which feeds their algorithm. Right. That's all what the search engine is based off of. That's is right. the item specifics that you give eBay. That's right. And you can go in your managed uh, listings or whatever the, the area where you see all your listings and you can, uh, there's filters there and you can filter by which, my, which one of my uh, listings have uh, item specifics that are required and it'll just populate the list and you can just go through them one at a time. So when that happened, we had thousands of listings. We had so many and we probably still have a few that we missed, right? That are Yeah, just... yeah I, I, I still have some every now and then when I'm doing, so, so whenever you want to make a change now, it'll say, you can't save unless you make this. Item. That's right. You have to do it. So, I mean, it forces us slowly to fix them all. But like we had like, whew, I think it was four or 5,000. And like, it could be something as simple as it, they want you to save if it's a CD or a DVD. Right. Some of them or, do them in bulk. but some Or the video game title or the yeah, whatever, exactly. right? So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. Another thing that you can do to old listings, um, promoted listings. Yeah. Some people don't use them at all. Nobody likes paying fees and uh, having that increase of a few percent is not always fun. However, if it's an old item and a competitive item, so let's say we're talking about Connect Adventures and you want to be the one that sells <laughs> the next copy of Connect Adventures, not the yeah. next guy, maybe it's worth putting a little bit into the promoted listing, a few percent, get up there in the search results. And if it's an old item, maybe it's worth also putting that in to beat out a couple of the new items that are being listed. Yeah, and actually talking about fees, uh, they did recently increase or they are increasing or whatever in June uh, with the new seller update. Um, so they used to be calculated that it was just a percentage based off on the value of the item. Yeah. But now it's it's uh, it's uses the same structure as all the other fees that they charge, which is basically the value of the item plus the shipping plus the tax, which is not cool but that's no. that's the way they're doing it but uh promoted listings uh for the longest time we were not using them and now we have it on everything um but we for the most part we only have one percent which is the minimum but that's going to make it so that occasionally you're going to get free tra well free traffic you're going to get extra traffic that if it comes from a promoted listing source you're going to pay an extra in our case, 1%, which is no big deal. But sometimes they recommend like 25% and 15%. Like that's a lot. Yeah, but like, that's even if you just put your all your listings at a 1% promoted listings, you will see an increase in traffic. <clears throat> You're not going to get as much extra traffic as someone who's, charged, who's uh, sacrificing 5%, but you will get some extra ones. And like we almost instantly saw an increase in sales. And I, I just want to say also that even though all of our stores on promoted listings, not all of our sales are, are from. Promoted no, listings. absolutely. Yeah. So and 
Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's cool because you can see whether you're running a sale. You yeah. can see what things have sold because of that sale. And whether you're running promoted listing, you can see things that have sold because of promoted listing. Yeah. And eBay will tell you, we're not really sure how it works. If you know eBay promotes a listing at the top of the page and the buyer buys it, that's when they count it as promoted listing. Or maybe it was somehow ranked using their promoted system and that's when they count it. But you're right. Only maybe a third or half of our sales actually showed that they were sold via promoted listing and the rest are still sold organically, which is neat. So you're not going to be paying an extra percent on everything. Yeah. So I think it has to do with uh, when you first search for something on eBay, it always uh, displays the best match. Right. And best match (laughs) just means whoever eBay wants to put up there, which would probably be the promoted listings. So if you then go and change it to the lowest price, I think it basically just bypasses. That cancels out. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But, but the first one that you're going to have, like the first one that the visitor will see will probably be the promoted listing. And then when they refine their search, they're just going to see whatever they're going to see in the search. But uh, I think it has a lot to do with that. Yeah, for sure. Interesting. Yeah, so I mean, those are some really good strategies. I'm not sure if you have any other ideas in terms of, you know, besides adjusting the listing, the sale price of the item, doing some sort of sale via your uh, promotion manager on eBay or promoting the listing. Is that pretty much it? Or taking them down and bulk selling them up? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the only other thing I would say, we've probably said it before on the stream, but it, it would be um, possibly cross-listing in on Facebook um, sure. or yep. PGG or whatever, Craigslist, whatever uh, uh, classified ad Poshmark for clothing, which I mean, can be a little more tricky, but you know, you do have to watch those things, but yeah, Yeah. absolutely. But for the stuff that's not selling, um, we found that there's certain things that don't necessarily sell as fast on Facebook, but you can sell for the same amount or more than you would on eBay, but you don't have to pay the shipping fee and you don't have to pay all the fees. So uh, we sold a bunch of, of Wii consoles and we sold a couple of Xbox 360s and basically broken consoles, which are worth next to nothing, but they're worth a little bit, but they're so expensive to ship. Um, so, you know, like there's options. And yep. uh, at the end of the day, it's just most people only have a certain amount of, well, everyone only has a certain amount of space to work with. And if something is taking space on your shelf, that makes it so that you can't put something else there that would sell, indirectly, you could say that it's costing you money in that Yeah, sense. absolutely. And it's costing you what you have in it, which is always, you know, you want to get that back because it's about turnovers and reinvestments yeah. and that's how you grow. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's an important thing to look at. And, and also it's a, uh, it eats up space. And uh, I read something once that, uh, so just about peace of mind, I, I read something once that imagine that every item that you have around, around you in a room made a small noise mentally right how noisy would your mind be so uh, i think for most sellers it would be just an orchestra of noise all the time but just having more space and having a cleaner inventory and all that stuff like and it's such a it's so good to have stuff sell and just to get it out and like anytime we see an old item sell we get a little bit excited oh, like, i know oh, wow, so i even forgot i had that or whatever like and uh, it's so weird because sometimes, like right now, we have like I don't know two or three thousand CDs for sale, like music CDs, and I have them in four or five like shelves, like like these ones that are almost floor to ceiling, and they're full. And well, not full, but there's a lot of them. But so the past couple of weeks, we've been selling a bunch that are some of the first that we listed right a year ago that haven't moved and now that i've modified the price all those ones are selling like kind of before all the new ones that i'm listing and so all that to say that just moving stuff around in your store kind of doing a little bit of tetris stuff uh it can really um revive uh even old items like that's the whole point and by reviving the old items it just brings new life to the whole store for sure yeah absolutely really interesting that you say that because absolutely just doing the small things can uh, make those old items sell and it's like one of the most satisfying things when they do so (laughs) 
Yes, it's like finally. Yep. <laughs> Even after a year, it's still we sold it. Yeah. So yeah, some things take a while, and that's okay. I mean, we let our video games sit for a year before we really uh, take them down and bulk them up, right? Because some things just you know, you know, you you adjust them over the year. Of course, at least that's the goal. But ultimately, that's sometimes how long it takes. Yeah, and I mean, I think most people focus more on listing new items than actually uh, customize like. Uh, making their current listings as good as possible. I mean, we suffered from that and I think everybody does to some degree. So, but just by making these little tweaks, it can really make a big difference. But yeah, I think, I think that pretty much covers yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'll have one more thing because sure. everybody knows that active uh, listings, when you go to your active listings and you know that big dollar figure that's right next to it and you go, oh, how nice that'd be if everything's sold and we got that kind of money right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, that's what you can be tackling, right? When you're adjusting your old listings. It's always about, oh, new listings will list, you know, 100 items here or whatever. We'll get another $5,000 on the store here, there, whatever. But ultimately that big figure that's under your active listings, you can target that by actually going in and modifying things. Yeah. And it's funny because uh, Jeremy, my business partner, he basically said, so we had about 200,000 of listed value, but that's subjective, right? That's what we thought we could get for it. So it's not right. Not a hundred percent real. And he said, so, I mean, it's selling, but it's not selling that fast and it'll sell eventually. But he said, would you really mind if we sold it for 160,000 instead of 200,000, but we got it much faster? I was like, no, of course not. Right. So, exactly. So now we have it's a good way to think about it. Else. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks so much for watching. That pretty much covers all the stuff we wanted to talk about today. We really enjoy making these videos for you guys. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Yeah. See you guys.